um, oh, well, the 20 cents, and that comes out to $118,698. So you can see that we started with $100,000, and we're paying back in total $118,000. So the bank have already taken $18,698 in interest, and you'll see very shortly how this kind of all comes together, and it's really, really cool. Um, so let's just carry on here. Now, let me just introduce this little concept to you, that the payment is constant over time, but the payment is made up of interest and principal, and the composition of this payment that is interest and principal does change over time. So even though you are paying $23,739.64 per year, the proportion of that payment is different every single time, and I'll show you how that's made up. So we know, let's just go back to our problem, that the interest rate was 6%, that's over here. So let's just write down over here 6% so we don't forget. Now, all you need to do in order to calculate the composition um, of this payment that is interest is just take 6% of the beginning balance. So if you have a calculator with you, all you have to do is 6% of 100,000, and that comes out to 6,000. So over here we have 6,000. Now, if we know that PMT is comprised only of interest and principal, and we know that this, we know this part, and we know this part, well, we can simply solve for this part, because we know that PMT is interest plus principal. So, 23,739.64 minus 6,000 is going to be the principal payment that is the proportion of this total payment. So with that simple math, all you need to do is just take this and subtract this away, and then you're left with 17,739. So 17,739. Uh, 64 cents, and then the ending balance is actually going to be just the beginning balance minus the principal payment, because the whole idea of this amortization, amortization schedule is that you're decreasing the, the, the beginning balance, but only by the principal. So you're subtracting the principal from the beginning balance. Um, and that is going to be 100,000 minus 17,739.64, and that's going to come out to 82,260.36, I think, 263.64, yes, okay. So that will bring us back to 100,000. Good. Now, the idea is, is that the beginning balance at the beginning of year two is going to be the ending balance from the previous year, from year one. So 82, 260.36, and so on and so forth. And you continue to take 6% of the beginning balance, and you'll trace that through to the end and then put it back. And this is you just constructing a small amortization schedule. Now, like we said before, we know the beginning balance was 100,000, but we ended up paying 118,698. So we know that the interest, right, is going to be the difference between how much we borrowed and how much we ended up paying back. So we know that the sum total of this column is going to be 18,698. 98.20, that's the sum total of that column. And now the principal, well, the principal we started with was 100,000, and we decreased it to zero, so we know that that's also going to be 100,000. And that makes sense, because 100,000 plus 18,698 is 118,698. And we know that PMT equals INT plus P PRIN, so, you know, it kind of all comes together at the end. And if you trace this table through all the way to the end, you will find that the beginning balance over here minus the principal balance here will give you zero. And this and this will will actually be, be equal um, if you've done it correctly. So yeah, I mean that's that's the amortization schedule, um, and it doesn't doesn't really get much harder than that. Although I can show you something uh, that is quite interesting if it gets a little bit more tricky, and that is the idea um, that if it's not annual compounding but it's periodic compounding. Let's just say that this was, you know, 6% annually, 6% um, annual, um, but it's being compounded semi-annually. Right, so you'll always be quoted the annual rate 6%. 
Um, but if it's being compounded semi-annually, well, actually, do you know what? Let's make it more realistic because mortgages are usually done, uh, mortgages are usually done monthly. So let's just call this monthly, monthly compounding. Um, all you'd have to do is you'd have to calculate the periodic interest rate. So if you remember, the periodic interest rate I per equals I nom over m. So over here, that would be six percent divided by twelve, and that equals zero point five percent. So as opposed to having a table up there, um, you know, for years one through five. So as opposed to having a table like we had up there um, for annual um, compounding, you know, as we saw over here when we had year one, two, three, four, five, um, rather it's going to be in terms of period, and it's going to trace through from one, two, three, four, five, six, and all the way through to period sixty. Um, and that is because, um, and I'm going to introduce this new little concept here of n times m, or what I like to call nm, uh, where n is the number of years and m is the number of periods per year. So if it's monthly compounding, we know that there's 12 periods per year, and if we said there were 5 years, then 5 years multiplied by 12 lots or 12 periods per year equals 60 periods total. Which is why instead of creating a schedule that runs us from year 1 to 5, it runs us from period 1 to 60. Um, and that's kind of, you know, it's exactly the same thing as, as yearly up here. Instead of writing year over here, you'd have period 1 through 60. Um, obviously, your professor is not going to ask you uh, to trace through an entire schedule from 1 to 60. Um, but he may ask you for, you know, what's the interest payment in the second year? What's the interest payment in the third year? So you'll have to trace it through for a couple of lines or a few lines. Um, just to see what he's asking for, but it's it's pretty much the same concept. Just always know that this interest rate over here is not necessarily the APR. It's not the APR. It's the periodic rate. It just happens to be with the annual compounding. This periodic rate is the same as the as the uh, nominal rate um, because the, the the periodic rate is merely the nominal rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year, and the, you know, when we're, we're dealing with annual compounding, it's being compounded once, so it's going to be 6% divided by 1, which is 6%. So this over here is actually the, the I per, um, I'm just going to write that in there, um, because that's, that's important. Uh, and all you need to do is you need to do the I per multiplied by the beginning balance, and then PMT minus the interest rate to get the principal, and then the beginning balance minus the principal to get the ending balance, because the whole idea of amortization um, is that you are decreasing the principal balance. So don't think that it's the beginning balance minus the payment is the ending balance. It's not, um, because then it's going to decrease way too fast. Um, you're only decreasing it by the principal each time. And you'll notice something interesting as well, is that as you run through the amortization schedule, um, the composition of interest and principal will change. You'll notice that the interest falls um, and the principal actually increases, um, which is which is interesting. Um, but you know, it's not necessarily from that point. It's from the point of the percentage of the payment um, that is interest is much much higher at the beginning um, than it is later on. And the idea of that is that the bank can kind of get you early. Um, so even if you hit the lottery at the end of year one and you come into year two and you're like, hey, I want to pay off my, I want to pay off my loan, you know, all of it. I don't want to carry on paying interest, you know, for the rest of these years. Um, you haven't really paid off that much principal yet. You still, I mean, you've just paid 23, almost 24 grand. Um, but, you know, you still have 82 grand outstanding. You've only decreased your loan by $17,000. So they've just gobbled up six grand off you um, just for having the loan for a year. So, you know, the composition of of, uh, of PMT, that is interest, um, will, you know, will be much higher at the beginning so that they can get you at the beginning. Um, because the higher the balance, the more interest you're going to be paying. So they like to decrease the principal balance very, very slowly. Um, and obviously the interest payments to be much, much higher at the beginning. So I think that's it. I think that's all for, for amortization and amortization schedules. Um, you know, have a look back through the video in case I, I went through quickly. Um, but I think that it's, uh, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty clear and I don't think it gets much more complicated than that um, in a principles of finance class. Um, later on when you get to investments analysis and you do some more complicated calculations, 
um, on amortization, uh, it could get a little bit more tricky. But the fundamentals of, of amortization is really is really just this. Uh, so I hope that that was uh, that was. Helpful.